Hey everyone, welcome back to the Astoundcast, episode 84, and yes, I have for once checked before the stream, so I'm not uncertain. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you'd, you'd think I'd have learned that one a while ago, but nah. Nah. Uh, <clears throat> so, let's start this one off as we always do. How has your week been? My week has been not too bad, good sir. Good. Got, got to meet up with a bunch of people, uh, so I've socialised the most in a while. Hell yeah. And yeah, it's just been an alright, well, a downright weird time, because we finally got to do D&D as well. Yeah, <laughs> which went incredibly well for my character. We give up on my character at this point. Yeah, my character's totally not about to be thrown into prison again. Probably. Yeah, I, I'm surprised it didn't happen within that session, but <coughs> my return to prison is probably not incredibly far away. Probably not, but hey-ho, you might as well. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> Quick. Quick? Really? Re this week, I don't know why, has gone back stupidly fast. Wow. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's kind of... I've clicked my fingers and it's Sunday again. I don't know what's happened. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't really describe it. It just feels like this week has been, like, not even a full day. Yeah. Yeah, very strange indeed. Um, yeah. <laughs> no sign of shunt pains until today. <laughs> nah, oh, it's, it's just yep. not luck, really, if you've got them or not. <laughs> yeah, l literally. I don't know when I'm going to get them one day to the next. <laughs> just as long as you're... Yeah. If, you, if you struggle during this, let me know. We can end it early. Yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. Took some painkillers yeah, not yeah. too long ago, so hopefully they'll kick in soon. Yeah, but don't strain yourself, because neither I nor anybody who's going to be listening to this afterwards want you to suffer, okay? No, I won't be uh, straining myself. If I, if it comes to it, I will end it early, but I shouldn't need to. Yeah, well, again, it's that because health is more important than content yeah <clears throat> um anyway uh do you want to quickly move on to this week's motorsport section sure because there isn't too much this week there is some very interesting news and unfortunately some pretty sad news oh dear um well to start off with the goodish news um McLaren have revealed the three liveries they're going to be running at this year's Indy 500. Um, and each of them are based off a livery that one of their cars has won, um, the Motorsport Triple Crown in. Now, the Motorsport Triple Crown consists of three different events across motorsport. And those three events are the Indy 500, which is, of course, the race that they're going to be at, um, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the most famous endurance race on the planet, and the Monaco Grand Prix. Um, and they're actually basing the liveries off the liveries of the cars that they won those races at for the first time. Yeah. So, the, <clears throat> the Le Mans livery is based off of the... Hold on a moment. <laughs> uh, okay. Here we are. Okay. Oh, pardon me. <clears throat> the Le Mans base livery is based off of. Oh my god. Uh, give me you a okay? second. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just trying to find the sources of where all these liveries are coming from. Yeah, you got. Are the sources just not coming up, or. I'm just trying to... F I I've looked on the McLaren Instagram 
but nothing. But I have found an article which I first discovered these, so... Um, yeah. It should tell me on here. Right, okay. We have the car that Pato Award is running, which is based on the livery of the M Monaco Grand Prix first win for McLaren, which was 1984 with Alain Prost. So it's based off the classic Marlboro McLaren livery, which is just, frankly, brilliant to see. Um, but to avoid copyright issues with Marlboro, they have changed the red stripes to orange to, of course, match what McLaren looks like now. Um, anyway, we have the... Le Mans livery, which is based on the... Um, You've been stuck on that for, like, I think it was the third time you got stuck on the Le Mans one now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, oh, for God's sake. Hold <laughs> on. I will, I, I, I will figure this out, people. Don't worry. It's just taking a while. No one's explaining where these liveries have come from. Aha. Okay. So, um, Alexander Rossi's car will be based on the 1976 McLaren Indy 500 livery. Um, so it's pretty much all orange. Um, oh, apologies. The 1984 McLaren F1 livery is going to be run by Felix Rosenquist, and Pato Award is going to be running the 1995 McLaren Le Mans livery colours. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so Pato Award's car's black. Um, Felix Rosenquist's is white and orange, and um, Alexander Rossi's is all orange, with a little bit of blue thrown in here and there, but very, very sparsely. Hmm. Um, now on to the more um, tragic news. Um, <laughs> oh dear. At a test for the Hyundai um, World Rally Championship team. Unfortunately, the life of Craig Breen, who was an Al Irish rally driver, he did lose his life uh, at, at the test event. Um, he had a massive crash and seemingly passed away in the crash. Oh dear, that's... Oh dear. Yeah, I... Where was... Okay, where was the test? I think it was in Portugal, where the six hours of Portimao endurance race is going on now. But there was another big incident at this test not long after. Um, in fact, it was another Hyundai. Um, this one's quite scary. Thankfully, the driver survived this one. But the incident itself was quite scary, really. Um, the car flipped over. And then... It flipped over the fence into the grandstand of the track. Oh, geez. Where the, where the crowd would usually be sitting. Thankfully, there was no crowd at this particular test. So that was very, very lucky. Like, it, the, the car did land on quite a few seats. Jeez, so that... it was frankly a miracle that there was no um, crowd there. Mm, yeah, otherwise, if that was a crowd there, that like, would be a I hate nightmare. to say it, lives would have been, I'm sorry to say, but lives would have been lost in that if there was crowds there. Yeah. Because the, the car was on its roof, spread across three to four seats, I'd say. And again, that was a separate incident. <laughs> that that was after. I think that was just. I think that was not too. No, actually, not too long before Craig Be Craig Breen's crash. Oh. So this was a separate incident altogether, which is quite worrying, really. But hopefully, the six hours of Portimao, which is going on right now doesn't go as badly, because I think this particular race isn't too far from the Portugal rally track. Oh. So hopefully this so hopefully this goes fairly well. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's kind of it for this week's motorsport section. Oh, wait, no, there is something else. Um, yeah. the, the FIA has set a date 
to hear Ferrari's appeal for Carlos Sainz's um, penalty that was given given to him on the final lap of the Australian Grand Prix, and they are and they're protesting it on the grounds of, well, there was no race actually run on that final lap. It was literally one lap behind the safety car, and the race was over. Ooh. So they're protesting on the fact that there was no way for him to negate the penalty. Yeah. Because, of course, if you're in a race and you're given a five-second time penalty, pretty simple job. Just build up a five-second gap to the car behind you. Makes sense. However, if you're behind the safety car, I think the um, speed limit is 40 miles per hour. You're not going to build up um, a five-second gap at that speed. You, you think? Yeah, so that I think that's the grounds that Ferrari are going on to review Carlos Sainz's penalty. Yeah. So that will be decided on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Make sure to note that down for your Formula One videos. Oh, so I will. Then you can... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I totally will. I, I would have talked about it in this week's. Unfortunately, um, the date was confirmed on Friday after I'd recorded. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. So I record those on a Thursday, and that was confirmed, I think, on Friday morning. You know, that was just painful. Know. That was just painful. Because <laughs> <laughs> let's face it, I didn't have much to talk about in that video. I've got to be blunt. Mm -hmm. So that would have been incredibly useful to know, FIA. Thanks, guys. Yeah. But yeah, so that will be decided on Tuesday. Whether their um, appeal will work or not is down to the FIA. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a bit personally annoyed at that penalty because I thought, well, that's him out of the points automatically. Like, that was an automatic demotion to, I think, 12th, which was ultimately last place. Oh. Yeah. Because he was, I think, I can't remember where he were, where he started in the, um, uh, I don't, I can't remember where he was on the grid, but w by the, by the time his five second penalty was added on, he was out of the points. And there was no way for him to um, appeal that. Well, or to negate that, I should say. I see. Yeah, because up to that point, I was thinking, why is this last lap being done? Like, nothing's going to happen. This is exactly how the race will finish. Just call it here. Because <laughs> it wasn't even as if it was going to be one lap to the grid and then one final lap of racing. The lap to the grid was the final lap. <clears throat> hmm. It was, in essence, pointless. There was no reason for that last lap to happen. Uh, I mean, uh, well, um, it has some. Sometimes this sort of stuff has to happen for a reason, but yeah. yeah. Although I'm struggling to find one. <laughs> And frankly, it sounds like the FIA are as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there is something that ha was announced also on Friday. Yeah, the FIA has not liked me this week. Um, <laughs> this, is going to an this is going to annoy Netflix quite a bit, because as you know, they are the ones who produce um, the, the F1 documentary, Drive to Survive. Um. Uh -huh. F1 has signed a partnership with Paramount Plus. Oh. Yep. Yeah. They have a show produced by Netflix and they've signed a partnership with Paramount Plus. Ouch. That's a that's a shock. That's a bit of a that's a bit of a slap in the face, isn't it? Yeah. Like, okay, Netflix, you you produce our most popular piece of content 
so we're going to sign a deal with one of your main rivals. <laughs> you, you know, fun times. Yeah, because, like, let's, let's not mix our words here. Most modern F1 fans have come in through Drive to Survive. You could ask anyone who's been an F1 fan for the last few years, and they will say probably that Drive to Survive got them into the sport. Yeah. So the fact that F1 has done this, yikes. Yikes, indeed. Yeah, that, that, that's a really big slap in the face <laughs> to, um, to Netflix, if you think about it. Hmm. Yeah, so that's happened. <clears throat> and another thing is that Brad Pitt's Formula One film has began filming. Oh, that's cool. And it is actually going to be filmed at the races. Ooh. <laughs> so that will mean F1 now has to contend with all the commentary teams from all the channels across the world that cover F1. The Netflix Drive to Survive. Um, camera crew, and the Apple TV camera crew who are producing this film. Yeah. That's a lot of goddamn camera crews. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a decent amount of camera crews with a lot of equipment. Yeah. Um, I'm beginning to wonder, are they going to are they gonna have any room for the actual cars? <laughs> um, no, but it's a really good day to if somebody were to need some spare camera equipment and or are a thief. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so that's begun filming. How that's going to work as a film, I don't know. Um, we know that Lewis Hamilton is involved in the production at quite a high level, so... I don't even know what this film... If this film's going to be based on a specific season, to be honest. I've got no idea. Well... It's something to look forward to. Mm, but something I want to have an announcement about is Keanu Reeves' documentary, because yes, he's doing an F1 documentary too. Um, his documentary specifically is going to be based off the 2009 only team, Braun GP, who were bought by Honda for one pound. A single pound, and they went on to win both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship in 2009. And they were purchased for a pound. To be fair, with the, uh, with the uh, changes in uh, the cost of living crisis even here, that's a bad yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the reason that Keanu is making this documentary on this specific scene. Because it is just insane to think that that actually happened. Yeah. And that's going to be on Disney Plus, apparently. But we've had no announcement as to that yet. So hopefully we hear something soon, because one, that is probably one of the wildest stories in F1 history. And it's Keanu Reeves. I mean, of course it's Keanu Reeves. Why Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Exactly. Hell yeah. Um, anyway, shall we move on to this week's entertainment section? <laughs> Might as well. Well, um, as you know that I shared with you yesterday, the Super Mario Bros. movie is now the most successful video game film adaption of all time. Which was something great to fall asleep to. Yeah, I I can't say I'm particularly surprised. Neither However, there is I, something but... I want to I want to quickly bring up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, John Lake um, John Lake Wazamo has made himself look like a bit of an idiot. What's he done? Well, as you might know, he played Luigi in the original. Mario film, right? He did. And somebody asked him if he was going to be watching the Mario film, and he said no, because there's less representation than there was in the original Mario film. 
Wasn't I'm there. sorry, what? What? Um, um, uh, would you like me to pull up the cast for the new Super Mario Bros. film? Um, Please and thank tell you. you. How much, and tell you how much representation there absolutely isn't. Um, at all. Like, nah. No representation here whatsoever. Um, we have, believe it or not, Anya Taylor-Joy, who is Latino. She was born in Argentina. So, yep. there's the Latin representation that he was mainly complaining about not being in the film, except that it is. Yeah. Um, we have Keegan-Michael Key, who is biracial. Nice. Um, who else do we have? We have um, um, Kevin-Michael Richardson, who played Kamek, who is a person of colour. We have... K Kari Payton, who played um, Pen the Penguin King, who is also a person of colour. We have um, Eric Bowser, who played a... Quite ironically, um, Eric Bowser, who played a Toad General. Beautiful. Love that. Um, who is um, a man of Asian descent. Um, so, yeah, no representation at all, is there? Not in the slightest. No. Uh, so yeah, John Leguizamo has made himself look a bit of a fool. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Let's face it, his problem, not ours. True. We we enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, it was so good. And I I saw something on Facebook earlier, and my first thought was, please, yes, and thank you. Jack Black <laughs> has has given his thoughts on who he would like to play Wario in a sequel. Pedro Pascal. Yep. I I see it though. That's the thing. Please and thank you. He even kind of looks like Wario to a degree. Yes. Like the facial features are close. So yeah. Illumination, if you're watching this, please and thank you. Please cast Pedro Pascal as Wario. Yes. But who do but who do we cast as Waluigi? Oh, oh, that is. A... What do we do for him? We just we just make him God. That's what we need to do. <laughs> Morgan Freeman, then. Yes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> I... Well, you said God, so... <laughs> In my defense, <laughs> well, Waluigi has managed to make me friends online, therefore... This is true. <laughs> but, yeah, I, um... I... Okay, so we know who Jack Black wants to play Wario, and frankly, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. There could be nothing that goes wrong with us. But Wario, who the hell would play Wario? Waluigi. Yeah, Waluigi. Ugh, yes. That's, yes. Don't ruin my god's name. Who who plays the big purple boy? Oof. Why do I want to say Danny DeVito for some reason? <laughs> um, because yes. It makes things ten times better. Oh no 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 no! I've got a better option. Go for it, Ryan Reynolds. Oh my goodness! He naturally has the chaotic energy you need for Waluigi. True. He wouldn't even need to act. True. And let's be honest, if he did play Waluigi, he would absolutely do the voice on instinct. Yeah. Oh, definitely. He... So, yeah, Ryan Reynolds and Pedro Pascal as Wario and Waluigi, yeah, that absolutely works. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now, this totally needs to happen now. Um, 
Um, also, got a bit of a theory um, um, piping up, so I've got a question to ask in regards to that theory. Mm-hmm. When is the next Nintendo Direct? Good question. Well posed. We'll figure this out. Indeed. Because I was thinking, if there is going to be some sort of sequel to a Mario film, be it a direct Mario 2, or a spin-off such as Donkey Kong or Yoshi's Island, I'm thinking that could be announced at a future Nintendo Direct, potentially soon. Okay, so the next... Okay, so the last Nintendo Direct was for the Mario film. So that was in March. Yep, that makes sense. Upcoming, um... The last one was February, and... I don't... They don't tend to announce them until they're about to go do it, so there's probably going to be another one. But it's okay. not going to be anything soon. So, right. yeah. Yeah. I personally think they are going to announce, like, something in addition... Like, uh, the next film in the franchise, I think, at the next Nintendo Direct. I don't know why, but I've just got this feeling. Yeah. But I don't think it'll be Mario 2 yet. No, I don't, I don't think they'd do it straight away, I guess. No. I think Yoshi's Island will come first. Probably. Yeah, I'm... I'm thinking they'll do it like they did in the MCU. They did Iron Man, and then they did the Hulk, and then they went and then they went back to Iron Man too. Which would fit with the colours, if you think about it. Hmm. I yeah, swear to God, if that's that... what I, I swear to God, if that's how they decide it, I will wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. But but yeah, I think the next film will probably be announced at the next Nintendo Direct. When that's going to be, God knows. Let, I'll let you know close to the time. Thank you. Hmm. But I would also love to point out that I'm going to have a very busy week this week with TV stuff. Because this week we've got the last episode of The Mandalorian coming out. <clears throat> yep. Um, the Power Rangers Anniversary Special, and the final, final episode of Picard. <coughs> oh no, you're gonna be, you're gonna be so upset once once that ends. Oh, I am. And I think there is something I forgot to mention in my video on Picard. Mm -hmm. Um, I I know I mentioned the Enterprise F. Did I mention who was commanding it? No. Uh, well... Um, it was Admiral Shelby. Oh. The, the very same Shelby that appeared in the TNG episode Best of Both Worlds when Picard became Locutus. Ooh. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, the last we saw of her, she was being shot by a couple of junior Starfleet officers who had been assimilated by the Borg. Mm hmm So there is potential that she is, um, uh, dead. Which really sucks. Yeah, that does suck a little bit. Yeah, but I think the funniest thing about that was when Riker saw her, he immediately saw Red. Because if you remember from Best of Both Worlds, Riker and Shelby did not get on. <laughs> yeah, true. So when Riker saw her, his face just kind of went, oh god, it's her. Um, but yeah, this this episode of Picard was really, really damn good. Oh my god. Oh. And I'm just surprised that I got my prediction right on what was going, what the ultimate plan was for Frontier Day with the villains. Granted, I was wrong on the culprits, 
like I, I was off about that, but I can't believe I actually got the plan itself correct. <laughs> Like, the full fleet was going to be taken over somehow, and they were going to attack Earth. I was quite surprised I got that correct. There's some predictions for it. Unfortunately, saying that, I might do. Because I still think um, the Fleet Museum fleet is going to be activated and brought into the fight. <coughs> against yeah. the Borg. Because, again... One Enterprise D versus the entirety of Starfleet isn't going to go too well. Hmm. As much as I love the Enterprise D, it cannot take on the whole fleet. It just can't. However, if you throw in a Klingon Bird of Prey, as well as the HMS Bounty, and the Defiant, Voyager, Enterprise A... You might stand a bit more of a chance with the whole mu fleet museum fleet. <laughs> yeah. So, so I do think at some point this season we are going to see um, we are, well, at some point in this episode we are definitely going to see that fleet museum help save Starfleet and the Federation. Because I'm sorry, as much as it's been denied, I'll be damned if all these Janeway name drops aren't going to lead to a cameo in this last episode. Yeah. Because it's been denied it's like crazy by Terry Metalis and Kate Mulgrew. But I'm sorry, but after all those name drops of Janeway in this season, there is no way she's not going to be in this final episode of Board Voyager. Um, or, or, I mean, I, you hope it. Yeah. And we've yet to really see that Deep Space Nine reference we were told about. I know we've seen the Defiance, but I don't think that's it. Because again, we know we know Cisco is alive once again, so I do think we're gonna get a bit of a next generation era reunion here. Because hmm. again, we saw we only saw fifty ships named in a bit of a readout of all the ships at um, Earth above Space Dock, which are now attacking Space Dock. But there was way more than fifty ships there. Yeah. And I don't think the Enterprise D on its own is gonna be able to survive that. <laughs> and as Doctor Crusher rightly says. If you take Earth out of the picture, say goodbye to the Federation. So, Earth will have to be saved somehow, but the Enterprise D on its own will not cut it. Yeah. And given that there's only seven crew members aboard, that's not going to work. No. But they can try. I mean, yeah, but I do think that the Fleet Museum fleet is going to play a part in that somehow. I'm actually just going to quickly pull up all the ships at the Fleet Museum because Dave Blass, who has designed a lot of the ships for this um, um, season, has given a bit of a readout of all the ships at the museum. Give me a second. Dave Blass, where is he? Uh... <laughs> Hold on, this will only take a moment. Um, there he is. Uh, where's the social? Okay, there he is. Right, let me find the museum readout that he gave. Um, aha, here it is. Okay, so. We have the Enterprise A, as I mentioned, the original Stargazer, so that's Picard's first ever command, um, the USS New Jersey, which is the last of the original series-type Constitution classes, um, the Akira-class USS Sentinel, which would have probably been seen in Star Trek First Contact, um, the USS Excelsior, captained by Sulu. Um, 
the USS Voyager, obviously. The Nebula-class USS Lexington. Uh, what? What? Um, that, 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 that's interesting. The USS Saratoga Miranda-class. Now, that's interesting because, um, that was Captain Sisko's old ship. And we see that get destroyed in the first episode by Locutus. Ooh. And I mean, not like the Enterprise D destroyed, where the sources action survived. No, no, like, completely obliterated. Yeah. What? Okay, moving on. Um, next, we have the NX-01 Enterprise. Hell yeah. Um, the Kronos-1, the Katinga class, that's a very old ship, um, granted. The HMS Bounty, which is now without its cloaking device. Um, and next we have the USS Wershing, who was actually named in honour of Annie Wershing, who was, of course, the Borg Queen from Season 2, who did tragically pass away from cancer not too long before the season started. Um, we have a Romulan Bird of Prey from the original series era. The USS Defiance, the USS Pioneer, and the USS Argo. So that adds up to, I think, 16 ships? Give me a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, 16. Down. And if you count... And if you count the Enterprise D, that makes the um, that makes the fleet um, fleet museum fleet seventeen whole ships. However, there could be some more stored in the other in internal hangars of the museum. Huh? Because we've only seen the ones um, outside and the Enterprise D, which was in Hangar Twelve. But I think, yeah. um, um, but I think, um, there was three other hangars. There was Hangar Bay 12. I'm pretty sure I just saw Hangar Bay 17. Um, okay, so we got, yeah, we got Hangar Bay 15, 7, ugh, 28, and 21. So, there could be some other ships hidden in there. Ooh. But, yeah, I think staff, I, th I think the Enterprise D is going to need help here from the other ships. Nice. From the museum, because I just don't see that working out too well for the crew. And something else that's been quite tragically pointed out. Um, there's probably a bit of a Borg apocalypse on Earth right now as well. Yeah. Because a lot of the transporters on Earth are Starfleet transporters. So anyone under the age of 25 who's gone through one of those, a.k.a. the entirety of Starfleet Academy, is now Borg. Hmm. So, there's probably a bit of a Borg apocalypse going on on Earth right now. All right. So, and, so anyone under the age of 25 who's used a transporter on Earth is now Borg. Ooh, that's a problem. That's a, that's a tiny little problem, yeah. Yeah, and that unfortunately includes Riker... And Diana's daughter, Kestra. Yeah. Because she's now at Starfleet Academy. Oh. So that's that's her assimilated as well. Oh Damn. Jesus. Yeah, this is very high stakes. But yeah, as you quite rightly pointed out, I'm gonna be devastated when the show ends. I don't know how I'm gonna cope. You'll find something else, don't worry. The void will yeah. be filled. Because I've got a pretty interesting fact here. This is the first show of the new Star Trek era to end. Oh. Yeah, none of the others have actually finished yet. 
We know Discovery is ending with Season 5 next year, but in terms of it actually finishing, it will be the second one to finish. Yeah. And what surprises me is the fact that Star Trek Picard is the second to most recent. Because the most recent now is Star Trek Prodigy. Um, So yeah, this is the second most recent one, and it's going to be the first to finish. And then Mm -hmm. Star Trek Discovery, which is the first of the new era, is actually going to be the second to finish. That quite surprised me, really. Yeah. Yeah. Because we knew Picard was only going to be three seasons from the word go. Like, it was pretty much announced when Patrick Stewart announced it at Destination Star Trek Las Vegas a few years ago. Mm-hmm. So we, we knew that from the word go, that it was only going to be three seasons, and that was that. There was no room for a fourth season. It was three, and that was it. Oh, yeah. Whereas Discovery, we didn't know how long that was going to last. Um, we didn't know if it was going to last four seasons, three, five, or how. It could have done a Next Generation era and lasted seven. But it seems that isn't the case. Um, and as for Strange New Worlds, Prodigy, and Lower Decks, I think Lower Decks is heading into its fourth season. Prodigy's only just finished its first, and so has Strange New Worlds, but, um... Season 2 is coming out soon. And by the way, I'm bringing this up again because, ah, we have had the Strange New World Season 2 release date before we've had the Season 1 soundtrack. Oh, yeah. What the hell? (laughs) (laughs) What the hell is going on? I mean, it's one of those mysteries, you'll never know. Yeah, at this rate, I'll just tag Anson Mount and say, um, hi, um, season one soundtrack when? <laughs> season two's coming out in a few weeks. Just send them an email at this point. Like, this is driving me mad. Like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Hell, I think the Picard season three soundtrack is releasing next Saturday. Oh, yeah. So that'll be out as soon as it's over, pretty much. Hmm. Because unlike America, we're still, for some reason, getting Picard a day late. Not so bad, though. Even though it's coming out... Uh Ah, not in terms of spoilers. Oh, yeah, true. The American fans tend to forget the rest of the world exists. Like, I got the Enterprise D spoiled for me on the Thursday night. Which I was semi-annoyed about. The only redeeming thing about that was the fact that it was the Enterprise D. Yeah. But, yeah, so... Yeah, the, the Paramount Plus do need to fix that, really. And it's like the... And it's like when Tuvok was in the show. They really fumbled the bag on that one. Because they released this thing called The Ready Room, which I think I've mentioned to you before. Um, It's like the after-episode talk show that they do. Um, Yeah. And they released it on the Thursday after the episode came out. And who was in the thumbnail? Tim Russ. Right in the middle of the thumbnail for the video. Which completely spoiled it for the rest of the world. And that was Paramount Plus themselves. Paramount knows when to spoil totally. Yeah, they totally spoiled the comeback of Tuvok. Well, kind of, but still. (laughs) The international fans went ballistic. Yeah. And actually, do you know what they did to avoid that again? Um... They actually pushed the Ready Room video back to yesterday. Aww. They actually pushed it back because of the Enterprise reveal. Because, because you could you imagine if that got spoiled for the rest of the world? Yeah. 
That would have been riots. That would have been more than just riots. Paramount Plus subscriptions would have been cancelled at a rate of I don't even know how many. They'd have lost a lot of subscribers in that very moment if they had spoiled it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this final episode of Picard. Kind of dreading it because of what they're all facing and with how little they're facing it with. Oh. That's because one ship versus, I think, close to a thousand is not going to go well. Hmm. Yeah. Something interesting is going to have to happen for that to work. Um, but yeah, this week's going to be a pretty busy week in terms of TV stuff, because, well, two of the big shows are ending, and, well, the 30th anniversary of Power Rangers is going to be huge. Um, but something else I want to talk about with The Mandalorian... The first six episodes were kind of slow in terms of plot. Not much was happening. Yeah. And then, then, then last week it went from basically went from zero to a hundred in like no time at all. So I don't want to say they've rushed, but they've definitely left stuff. They've definitely left main plot stuff quite late. Yeah. Like, this is literally the final two episodes of the season. And they've only just reintroduced the main villain last week. Hmm. So, this final episode of the season is going to have to be pretty good, really, because they've got a lot to cram in in, I think, about 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, they've got a explain how the Mandalorians are going to escape, what got Moff Gideon's going to do about it, because he's probably going to try to stop them again and kill them all. So they've got a lot to cram in, and very little time to cram it in, too. Hmm. But it is the Mandalorian, so I'm hopeful. True. Because it hasn't failed me so far. But yeah, hopefully they manage to make it work very, hopefully very well. Um, is there anything else I need to bring up really quick? Well, I say really quick, we've still got 15 minutes, but um, is there anything else I need to bring up? Uh, I've talked about the Mario Bros. movie again. I've talked about Mandalorian, Star Trek. Um, is there anything else you need to talk about this week? Um... I got Animal Crossing manga. That counts. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah, I managed to get the third and fourth um volume because it's four out at the moment. Because it follows the story of four characters starting on an island for New Horizon. So that's something that they managed to do for that. I can't lie. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, no, I. I found it like months ago, and I've wanted to get the third one. I didn't realize a fourth one had been released. Huh. I didn't even realize the first one had happened. I didn't know this was a thing whatsoever. Yeah, uh, the last time they did a proper gimmick, or like an extra thing alongside the game, was with uh, City Folk slash um, Wild World. Oh, I yeah. tend to count them as very similar. Be with right. that, they released they released a film. Oh, yeah. Which is why an Animal Crossing film is technically something, but not live action. That's all I ask. Yeah. Well, yeah, the manga I've got now, they've they've introduced a couple more um, animals <sighs> to the town. So there's Kabuki. Yeah. And I think Zuck is in here, which is who's on my island. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've tried to summon KK and that failed. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, 
then there's also the dream suite too which is a gimmick that they brought back from uh new leaf mm -hmm. so yeah currently in the island for chapter three there is dom raymond coach lucky kabuki and um zucker as like their villagers that they've got and then the next manga will add two more okay huh that's for three number four we'll add two more but yeah no that's it's quite a fun thing because you get to see the different characters come in and then what they do oh hell yeah um so yeah that's, that's something i guess <laughs> yeah, that's pretty interesting huh yeah. Apart from that, I have um, nothing. Ah, fair enough. Um, um, I'm trying to think if there is anything else I need to talk about real quick. Uh, no. No, you know, I, I, I think you're right. Uh, it's not been interesting, to be fair. Well, not like interesting, interesting, but kind of like a week where... A lot of stuff's happened, but nothing of major note has happened, if you know what I mean. Um, there is something I could bring up. It is semi-boring, but it could be quite yeah. interesting to a degree. Um, okay. Basically, the BBC has just made a bunch of voluntary redundancies. Oh, God, this again. <laughs> um, have you heard about this? Yeah, that's all I've been hearing from, like, people when I've been working. Have you heard the names that have been offered redundancy? I haven't, though, no. Um, here's a few for you. Quite big names as well. Um. Yeah. So, oh, Jesus. Um, Sophie Rayworth. Ooh. Who presents the 6 o'clock news, I think. Um. Clive Myrie, yeah, who who I think's a war correspondent as well as the presenter of Mastermind, um, Rita Chakrabarty, who also does the six o'clock news, um, yeah, Nick Robinson, who does um, I think I think he's a political journalist, and um, Hugh Edwards, Ooh. who of course had the unfortunate honour. Of announcing the death of the Queen last September. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so there's been a lot of... Granted, all of these are voluntary. So, they aren't guaranteed to be going. But, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them do take the redundancy and leave. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame them. Although... At the moment, a lot of stuff, especially with the BBC radios, they're yeah. getting a lot of like, jobs taken from I was going to say, I know a few um, BBC Radio 4 presenters have been thrown into this as well. Yeah, uh, they're, doing, they're trying to do like an overhaul of the radio stuff. Yeah. I can, I can say a bit of it, actually, I think. Um... So what they're planning on doing is with like the local radios, they're only keeping one of their shows per one of their shows for like their four hour gap. radio station. Think, okay. Yeah, but I think it's going to be their morning shows that they're going to either their morning shows or their afternoon shows they're going to keep. I know for um, Sussex and Surrey they would keep their morning show. Okay. And a couple. But I think the majority of them, they'd keep the afternoon one. But okay. with that, everything would then get redirected to, like, Radio 1, I believe, or, like, Radio 2. Ah, okay. So that is a bit of an overhaul, because people are now having to get re-interviewed for their own jobs to see how that goes. Oof. There's... I'm not... And the thing is, it doesn't just affect, like, the presenters. It also affects, like, the producers, like, people in the background. Yeah. Um, the uh, oh, yeah. bulletin people as well. So, yeah. I, it's one of the things I've ended up hearing a bit about when I've been like, working with them. 
Yeah. Because it sucks, and everyone that everyone like all both radio stations for Sussex and Surrey, they do like a hell of a job. Yeah. So it's more it's more of a case of they need to they've got enough money because they get like taxpayers money out of this because of the um T V license. Well yeah. But at the same time, where is it all going? Yeah, that is the question. <laughs> the redundancies don't need to be done as much simply because especially with the radio, I know I'm a bit more passionate about that, but it's because People like the local radio. It's something familiar to them. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was just a quite surprising announcement that I... Well, quite surprising report I saw last night. At first, I, qu I was questioning the legitimacy a little bit, as it was only one news outlet that reported it. But when I woke yeah. up this morning and checked again... There was loads of reports, and I thought, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Okay. Fine. Final, slightly more uplifting thing for before we go. Cool. Good. There, there <laughs> what was, is it? There was a deadline. There was a deadline that you were supposed to reach, and I don't think you have. Oh yeah, no. Nope. Because the deadline was supposed to be April fifteenth. Correct. Unfortunately, Shunt Payne said, ha ha, screw you. Damn. How far did you get? Uh, still on Halo 4. So I've completed the original saga that I have done. Which is yeah. Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved. Two and three. So I'll finish that. But unfortunately, the second saga that's still ongoing, I haven't managed. Because just as I was finishing Halo 3, my shunt pain started to rear its head again. Yeah. Then ever since then, it's been going downhill. <laughs> and then uphill again, and then downhill again. It's been a weird few weeks. Yo, 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 yo. Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, that target... Uh, yeah. Nope. Ah, oh, well. And I only set that target because I thought, okay, I'm on a good roll here. I think I can actually do this. Yep. I got shut down on that very quickly. <laughs> well, you tried. Yeah, hopefully I'll finish it soon. Mm -hmm. I'm, well, I can very solidly say it'll be done by the end of the year. Hope so. I can, I can definitely more or less promise that because, um, yeah, it's only three games to go and I've got eight months. So I can definitely say by the end of the year. Well, let's hope. I'll keep you to that. I'm not writing it in my diary, though. No. Hell, I was going to say, if I can't complete it by the end of the year, there is some that something has gone horrifically wrong. If you can't complete it by the end of the year, I get to play another visual novel with you. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I've got a pigeon one. It's fine. But, yeah, if I can't do it by the end of the year, something has gone drastically wrong. Hold you to that, then. But yeah, hopefully I've been able to finish it soon because I've been really enjoying Halo. It's been a very good series so far, so I'm hoping that I'm able to finish it soon. When exactly, I don't know. But we'll hopefully find out yeah. within the coming weeks. Yeah, thinking about it, setting a date was probably a very bad idea. Yeah. Because whenever I do that for anything... My shunt always pipes up and says, ha, 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 no. Oh, No, you don't. Oh, you want to do something by a specific date? Um, yeah, how about I completely stop you from doing that? <laughs> so, 
So well, as long as you don't, as long as it's not going to affect you too much, that's all that matters. No, that's why I haven't been playing because I knew if I tried it, <clears throat> the shunt yeah. would not like that because it is a very loud game series as well. Hell, it's literally based on a series of wars in the future. Yeah. But, yeah, hopefully I'll get it finished at some point soon, because I, I, I do want to finish it, to be honest. It's been really good so far, so I just want to see how it all... Well, I say ends, more of how it is going up to now. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um, would you oh, like to wrap this one up here? Yeah, might as well put a little bow on it. Sounds good to me. Okay, everyone. Thank you all for joining us on this stream. If you've been, pardon me, watching here on Stereo, please follow me at Astounding Cameron and Roxanne Roxaruni. Or if you've been watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel, also Astounding Cameron. The sub button will be just below the video title. And if you click the video title, you'll head into the description, at which point you're going to see my link tree, which contains my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and here on Stereo. And if you go below my link tree, you're going to see Roxanne's YouTube, me and Et, and her website. And that's going to do it for this stream, unless... There is a Tree of the Year award. Oh, hell yeah. A Woodland Trust runs an annual Tree of the Year award, and in 2022, that belonged to an ancient yew in Waverley Abbey, Surrey. Oh damn! Been said to be that tree was said to be thousands of years old, and is our UK entry to the 2023 European Tree of the Year award. Damn. Okay. So yeah, huh. tree. Um. Yeah. So there's a National Tree Awards thing. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Um. And on that front, an amazing, amazing fact. I'll see you all tomorrow with another YouTube video, and next weekend with another stream. Goodbye! Bye!